All right, hello and welcome folks. Welcome to another quick UE5 tutorial. And in this tutorial, I'll be going over a sidewalk pedestrian setup. So what I mean by that is when we begin to simulate, if you were to have two or more uh, pedestrians, you would have them, you would be able to have them start up at two different times. See, this one started first and then the second one started and we're going ahead and, you know, we have walking pedestrians. I mean, it's a pretty cool feature. Makes the game look so much more realistic, depending on, you know, the style of gameplay you're going for. So without further ado, let's go into how we actually set that up. Now, going ahead and going over to a new third person uh, template. Or just This is the default template. Just go ahead and hit create. Now, I'll be honest, the code for this isn't simple. I mean, <laughs> it's not difficult. It's very simple. Much more simple than I expected. It's just when I was looking for information on how to set this up, I kept finding... Um, not what I was looking for. <laughs> so <laughs> that's what I kept finding. And, and it was unfortunate, but but true. So, you know, it was just it's just bad tutorials out there, folks. That's all I have to say. And so now that we're in this brand new, you know, default third person template, let's just go ahead and do this as fast as possible, but also as as, as efficient. So I'll, you know, I'll I'll recap the code at the end because it's not long at all. But let's just get right into it. So before we forget, let's go ahead and add a nav mess because any times we're going to have NPCs, which stands for non playable character, um, moving, we need to have a navigation mess bounds mesh bounds volume. That way that they can they can be into that space. That way they'll know where they need to move. So when you first type it in into the place actors and drag it out into the world, you get this sort of empty wireframe bo uh, box. But if you press the P key on your keyboard with the selector. You see this green uh, square sort of appears. Now we're gonna actually have to space this out over the area we want the NPC to be able to walk, because the greens is basically means I can access or accessible. Let's just think of it like that. So as long as it's in accessible space, the NPC will be able to walk here. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna set up a path along this wall, or along this area, so that the NPC starts here in this location moves there, moves over there, over there, and then back to the starting position. So without further ado, ado, let's get right into that. So we're going to go ahead and start and duplicate this um, initial third person character um, uh, blueprint. And let's just name, rename this NPC one for non playable character. Now in NPC one, we can actually go over here and just delete all the code because this is just for the default controls and because this is a non-playable character, it will need those anyways. So now, without wasting any time, but also, you know, explaining what we're doing, we're gonna add a custom event. because I do wanna kind of make this, you know, fast. So let's just name this custom event, NPC1. That is not path, wow. <laughs> okay, oh my goodness. <laughs> okay, now, we can add a delay and we're going to, and I'm actually going to explain the purpose of this delay in, in detail. So if you had two or more, um, you know, let's actually go over to my other projects where I can show it a bit better. So I have these two um, mannequins, right? And I want them to start at two different times. And, and you know, and, and because of that, they'll be starting at two different times, walking in the same direction or two different directions, but they're not at the exact same pace. So we're, we're not looking at, you know, a bunch of marching soldiers, you know, doing the same animations at the exact same times. Because as you can see, one starts up between one to three seconds later, and the other starts up between four to six seconds later. So if you use a delay node, that's what you can do with it. That's the only purpose of a delay node is to have things start at different times. So we're going to actually set that up. So that way, if we pull up a float in range, and we'll first start this up to between one to three seconds. So anywhere between one and three seconds, randomly chosen, this uh, code will play. Now, of course, if you had two uh, mannequins, you could set it up. You could set the second one up to be, you know, minimum four, max six. So that way it's between four to six seconds. Set the third one up to be, you know, seven and nine, so on and so forth. You get the idea. Now, after the delay node, because that's mainly like, this is like probably like a good 30% <laughs> of the code right here, folks, it's really not difficult. Let's just go ahead and make a new uh, Boolean variable. All this is moving question mark. Go ahead and set that. So set 
And make sure you check the box that way it is set to true. Now, when true, when you are moving, you want the AI move to. So type in AI move to. And for the pawn, let's go ahead and get a reference to self. So get a reference to self. That's perfect. Now for the destination. So this is where things get interesting. Because if you wanted an AI roam, you would get some random number generated. And that's great if that's what you're looking for. But if you're wanting uh, you know, a specific path, it's actually easier. Well, it's not easier. It's the same difficulty. It's still easier regardless, but let's just go into how to do it. Okay, so this NPC is going to start at this location. So if we go ahead and look at the location underneath the transform, we see we're starting at 26 um, on X2660, Y2470, and Z90. Now, this is our starting location. So if we want to move on this sidewalk, so let's say in between this box, that means we're only going to be moving on the X axis. So if we're going to move to around this location, that's 1200. So that means on this destination, we need to set this up as 1200. Now, the reasons why we don't leave Y and Z zero is because if we were to actually go into Y zero, you would see we're starting up at the sort of origin point of the world. So this is like, you know, Y zero on the axis. And we don't want that. We just want to be on the exact same Y and Z axis um, as we started out. And so to do that, just copy over the exact same values. So that's 2470 and 90 because these two are not changing right now. So when we're moving in a straight line only on the X axis, this that means the X axis is in the only value that would change. Now, because we're going to go around this, that means the second part, we're going to actually move on the Y axis. So that means we're going to go from 2470 to, let's say, around this point, which is 3120. As you can see, the new location on the Y axis is 3120. So that means on success, drag on AI move to. Let's change this to 3120. 3120. And we can actually set this to be the exact same values as this thing. So that would be 1200 and Z90. As you can see, we're going to just repeat this process again. So if we were to move on, let's say, two axes this time, we're not going to move on the third unless you want them to be in a different altitude. So we're only moving on a different um, on two axes at a time. So now we're in this corner here. And as you can see, the corner is 2720. So go ahead and set up an on success. AI yeah, move to 2720 on the X. Wow. Perfect. And then 3240. Now we're moving on two axes this time. 3240 and then Z is still 90. So that means on success of this one, let's go ahead and set up an is moving. Unset that to false, and to do that, just leave this unchecked. Now, you don't really need to connect the on fail, but you can if you want to, because if it's on fail and it's not connected, it's not going to do anything, anyways. But if it's you know, if it's on success, it'll just stop the movement. Um, and now at this point, we are basically done. So, if we were to compile and save this right now, the code wouldn't work only because the code is not to be called. Now, plenty of people will be quick to tell you to use an event tick node, those are <laughs> the very worst nodes that you can use, you really don't want them, um, you know, you want to avoid using them as best you can. In this situation, that's easy enough. So all we need to do, instead of using an event tick now, let's just do event begin play. Now we can actually call in a, a sequence node if you want, um, if you know, if you want other things to be connected to this event begin play, then just use a sequence node. Um, make sure you actually see the one with this icon next to it. And once you have that, you'll have something like this. So now on then zero, let's just type in NPC. And because we're calling in our function NPC one path, that's all we need. Now let's compile, save, and real quick, I am going to do this. That way we're not moving too fast in the game. Let's just go ahead and set this up to be a bit slower. So if I go to character movement, walk speed, let's change that's like 300. Okay, so it's not too slow, but it's also not too fast either. It's kind of just right for this tutorial. But I don't want to spend too much time on this. And now we're reaching about the 10 minute mark. So let's go ahead and actually hurry this up. So if we were to actually start at the original start location, actually we'll just start around here, right? And yeah, this would be fine. 
Let's just start right here. So if I were to go ahead and click this um, icon, hit simulate. Now, if we are to simulate, see one to three seconds later, we actually started moving. Now that we're moving, nothing is happening. What has gone wrong? Well, because as you can see, it once we started, one to three seconds. So this time it looks like it took a full three seconds before we started. Whereas previously, you know, it only took like one second. We're only moving to that one location. So we forgot to do something. Only thing we forgot to do really was just connect the self, the uh, self reference to the pond. That way it knows what it is actually moving. That's why we got this reference to self. So if yours doesn't work, make sure you have this connected to all the pawns of the AI move tools. And then let's go ahead and try that one more time. So compile and save after we have those connected. Let's hit simulate. One to three seconds later, we have movement. Okay, we are at the first location. Now we hit that turn. Okay, now we got the second location. Okay, now we got the third location. Now, of course, if we wanted to return to the starting location, we would just set this up to AI move to. Go ahead and just do this one more time. You already know how to do it, but I'll do it with you just in case you, you know, forgot the process. Um, let's go ahead and break that right there. Break that right there. There we go. And now I just set up this to be 2770, whatever your starting location is. So for me, it's 2770. And then Y is 2400. And then Z is obviously still 90. And as you can see, so all this code is saying, this custom event is saying, once this custom event is called, let's go ahead and start delaying between one and three seconds. After that, we're gonna set the is moving variable to true, which means we are now in motion, and we're gonna make the AI move to this XYZ location, and then it will on success, it will move to this XYZ location, and then on success, it will move to this XYZ location. And on this last success, it moved to this last location. And then once this location has been reached, we set the movement variable to false. And then we just have event begin play. So once we're starting the game, um, this function gets pulled. This function known as NPC one path gets called. This basically means this entire code then implements. So well, save, go ahead and look at that one more time. So between one and three seconds, that was about like 1.5 seconds, give or take. And we even got the camera right here. See, it's moving, moving around, moving around. We are looking good to go. So I literally forgot to connect <laughs> the pond, but you get the idea. So if yours didn't work, make sure you connect that pond. And that's basically it for this tutorial. I'll let it play while I'm doing my outro. So hopefully you you know you can use this to set up your own path. That way you can have your own pedestrian set up. And again, if you're using two or more pedestrians to make them start at different times, all you have to do is adjust the time of that uh, delay node. And to do that, just as we talked about before, you know, if on NPC one you want the minimum and maximum range to be between one and three seconds, on NPC two. You could set the minimum and maximum to be between four to six seconds or five to seven seconds, so on and so forth for as many NPCs as you want. That way they're all starting up at different times. And then, you know, your end result will be something looking like this, where you have uh, a variety of NPCs starting up at different times. Because, you know, we got these two over here. Then when actually, if I was to go down, I actually got a couple, one down there moving, kind of yellowish, and then this blue one as well. You get something like that. So I definitely, hopefully, you know, you you learned something from this video. I went as fast as I could. It still reached around 15 minutes, but still quick enough to get the point across quick and efficiently. With that said, folks, hopefully you can use this uh, knowledge to, you know, set up your own successful pedestrian walkway paths. And if you have any questions for me, let me know down in the comments below. With that said, best of luck on your endeavors in Unreal Engine 5 because it's rough out here when you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> so without further ado, I'll leave you to the rest of the day.